Puss in Boots from 50 Famous Fairy Tales. Long ago, there lived a miller who had three sons. When the miller died, he left the mill to his eldest son, his donkey to the second son, and for the youngest son, there was nothing left but the cat. Now the eldest son and the second son were happy with their share, but the third son was sad, for how could anyone make a living with only a cat? Alas, said the boy, I could sell the cat's skin for a penny or make me a cap of it, but what else is a cat good for? I'll starve, surely. As the youngest son sat thus bemoaning his fate, the cat heard him. Going up to his woeful young master, he said, Good master, don't be downhearted. If you will but get me a pair of boots and a large bag with a drawstring, I shall make a living for you. Realizing that this was no ordinary cat, but a wise and clever one, the boy did as he was bade. As soon as Puss had his boots and his bag, he hurried into the nearby wood. Putting some clover and buttercaps in his bag and leaving it invitingly open, he lay down and pretended to sleep. Along hopped a foolish fat rabbit, who, smelling the green stuff in the bag, hopped in after it. Quick as a wink, Puss in Boots pulled the drawstring tight and had the rabbit in the bag. Then he hastened to the royal palace and asked to see the king. When he came before the ruler, Puss bowed low and said, Sire, I have here a fine hair which has been sent to you by my lord, Marquis of Carabas. And Puss smiled behind his whiskers, thinking of the noble high-sounding name he had made up for his master. The king thanked him, for the hair was indeed a fine one, and Puss and Boots departed. Next day, Puss went out again with his bag. This time he baited it with green. Again, he left it open and lay down to, and pretended to nap. Along came a fine fat partridge, who, seeing the grain in the open bag, went in after it. At once, Sly Puss and Boots drew the string shut, and the partridge was caught. As before, Puss and Boots went to the palace and politely asked to see the king. When he had been admitted to the king's presence, he said, Sire, here's a gift from you, from the Marquis of Carabas. He has many of these fine rare birds upon his land. The king was pleased with the thoughtfulness of this unknown Marquis of Carabas and did not let on that he had never heard of his name before. Of course, no one else had heard of it either, but since Puss had, that's because Puss had made it up. But no one in the king's court wanted to admit his ignorance, and so no one ever asked who the Marquis of Carabas was. For some time, Puss in Boots continued to bring gifts to the king until the vain, that vain personage began to think that the Marquis of Carabas must be a rich man indeed. One day, Puss heard the king and his lovely daughter were going on a drive along the river. Hastening to his young master, he said, Good master, if you will, allow, if you will follow my directions, I think your fortune is made. Then he told the miller's son everything he had done, adding that the youth must go to bathe in the river at the exact time and the exact spot Puss and Boots should tell him. The young man did as he was told, although he didn't see the sense of it. As he was swimming about in the water, the cat took his shabby clothes and hid them under the rock. When he heard a rumble, the rumble of the king's carriage, Puss ran to the road, help, crying, Help! Help! The Marquis of Carabas is drowning! Recognizing Puss, the king stopped the carriage and ordered his servant to go out and pull the Marquis out. Puss ran up to the carriage and said, Oh, sire, I don't know what to do. While he was swimming, his master's fine clothes were stolen. The king sent a servant to the palace at once with orders to fetch clothes suitable for a rich young nobleman. When the miller's son had donned the silken clothing, which was better than he'd ever seen before, he looked so handsome that the princess fell in love with him at sight. She begged her father to take the young man into the carriage with them. Puss and Maroots ran joyfully ahead of the carriage and was soon out of sight. When he saw some reapers in a grain field, he ran up to them and cried, The royal coach is coming this way. When the king asks you who owns these fields, see that you answer, The Marquis of Carabas. If you do not, you shall be ground up into mincemeat. Not wanting to be ground up into mincemeat, the reapers agreed. When the king approached, he called out, Who owns these fine fields? The reapers answered, The Marquis of Carabas, sire. Puss ran on till he, he came to some men who were mowing the hay in the meadow. He ran up to them and cried, The royal coach is coming this way. When the king asks you who owns these fields, you, will, you must answer, The Marquis of Carabas. If you refuse, you will be ground into mincemeat. These people, too, obeyed the cat. So again the king was told that the land belonged to the Marquis of Carabas. Next, Puss came to a great castle in the woods. He knew to be the castle of a terrible ogre who had magical powers to change himself into many shapes going to the door he said i have a message for the owner of this castle but when he was led into the presence of the ogre puss said 
I have not so much, I have not heard so much about you that I had to pay a visit. I cannot believe the things that I hear are true. Surely you cannot change yourself into a lion. Oh, can't I, said the ogre, greatly flattered, and he promptly changed himself into a lion to prove he could do it. At the sight of the lion, Puss ran up the curtain in fright. Then he clung until the ogre was himself again. Then he came down. Marvelous, simply marvelous. You became a huge lion in a twinkling, but you can become something quite small. Surely it's not true you can't change yourself into a mouse. Oh, can't I, roared the ogre. In an instant, he'd become a timid little mouse. Faster than lightning, Puss pounced upon the mouse and ate him up. Then running up, running to the door, he saw the royal coach approaching. Holding the door wide, he called out, Welcome to the castle of the Marquis of Carabas. When the king saw the rich palace the Marquis owned, and he walked through the spacious grounds, he made no objection to his daughter marrying the young man, which she did at once. And that is how the famous Puss in Boots made his master's fortune.